Hello students. In today's session, we'll be discussing an important topic, pneumonia. So the learning objectives of this session, at the end of this session, the student must be able to list the etiology and the types of pneumonia, describe the clinical features of pneumonia, discuss the evaluation and management of pneumonia, and list the complications of pneumonia, and also discuss the clinical features, management of lung abscess. Pneumonia is a very common disease. It's the sixth common leading cause of death world over, especially in the developed nations. Age is a very important risk factor and one of the important mor morbidity and mortality in elderly is secondary to pneumonia. As William Osler had told, pneumonia is a friend of the aged. So, majority of the elderly people do die due to pneumonia. Let's begin with the case scenario. So, here we have a 55-year-old male smoker who is a diabetic who presents to the OPD with high grade fever, right sided chest pain and cough with rusty sputum of one week duration. So based on the history you have, this is an acute febrile illness with the involvement of the respiratory system. So respiratory system is involved because there is cough with rusty sputum and that is pretty classical of pneumococcus. When you have a pneumococcal pneumonia, you get this uh, cough with rusty sputum. So, that is what you can make out based on the history. Let us go on to the examination. The patient is febrile. There is mild tachypnea respiratory rate of 24 per minute. Pulse rate is 90. BP is little low, 170. A saturation is also low. It is around 94 percent. So, that is the abnormality that we have in general examination. When we go on to the respiratory system, the trachea is central. There is a dull note on percussion in the right infraclavicular and mammary area. There is a tubular bronchial breathing egophony and crepitations heard in the same areas. So, you have a tubular bronchial breathing and egophony. These are specific for consolidation. So, this patient has consolidation. That is the diagnosis that we have and the right infraclavicular and mammary area. So, possibly it is involving the right upper lobe. So, that is the diagnosis that we have. Right upper lobe consolidation or pneumonia possibly secondary to pneumococcus, streptococcus, pneumonia. So, pneumococcus is the possible organism that is producing this disease. So, that is the diagnosis that we have. So, the questions that could be asked to you is what is your provisional diagnosis? Discuss the causes and pathogenesis of this disease. How will you manage this case and what are the complications that could ensue? So, that is what we are going to discuss in the future slides. So, coming on to pneumonia. So, what is the definition of pneumonia? So, pneumonia is a syndrome caused by acute infection, usually bacterial, clinical or radiographic signs of consolidation, either a part or parts of one or both lungs. So, this is the definition that has been given. So, it is an acute infection which is usually bacterial characterized by clinical and or radiological. So, both need not be there, both can be there together, but even one of them is there, it is enough of consolidation of a part or a parts of one or both lungs. So, that is a pneumonia. In simple words, it is nothing but infection of the lung. So, pneumonia is infection of the lung. In contrast, we have a term called as pneumonitis. Pneumonitis is where there is inflammation of the lung. So, inflammation could be secondary to infection or it could be due to non-infectious causes like we have chemicals or radiation which produces inflammation of the lung. Now, when we discuss the lower respiratory diseases, the lower respiratory and the plural diseases, the first disease that we have is pneumonia, where there is the alveoli getting infected. So, it could be bacterial or viral. Pneumonitis is usually inflammatory secondary to either radiation or chemicals or certain autoimmune conditions, that is pneumonitis. The second lower respiratory tract that infection that we have is bronchitis, where there is inflammation of the bronchi. Usually, common causes are asthma, COPD. Rarely you could have bacterial bronchitis also. The third site where there can be infection in the lower respiratory tract is the smaller airways that is the bronchiolitis. So, where there is inflammation of the bronchioles and most often this is viral followed by bacterial. So, these are the common respiratory diseases which are infective in etiology that we have. Other than that, you could have the suppurative lung diseases where there is a lot of pus formation and we have two important diseases that come under that. One is where there is pus in the plural space, what we call it as an empyma, pus in the plural space. And the second one is where there is pus collected within the lung, a circumscribed collection of pus within the lung parenchyma called as lung abscess. 
So these are uh, the entire uh, spectrum of diseases that we call it as the lower respiratory tract infection. So when we say LRTI, it means one of these that could happen. Now why does pneumonia occur? So pneumonia occurs when there is an imbalance between the clearance as well as the colonization. All of you know that there are microbes in the airway, the upper respiratory tract, there are airways that is there and it is Norman commensas are present. But there are many factors that prevent the colonization of the bacteria. Now what are they? The one is the mucus entrapment, second is the ciliary clearance, then you have the immune surveillance and intactness of the epithelial barrier. Also from the mucosa we have secretory IgA, the surface protein SPA and SPD and defensins. So these are a lot of mucosal defense barrier that we have which prevent an infection from coming. Also you have something called as a mucociliary clearance. The respiratory mucosa is lined by ciliated epithelium and the cilia beat towards the external environment. That means they will be beating from inward to outward. So whatever microorganisms or any foreign body that comes out is generally thrown out. So the mucosal cilia are present, the defensins are present, there are mucosal macrophages which are there and there is a secretion of immunoglobulin A from the surface which also prevents the infection. Also within the alveoli we have alveolar macrophages which are the ones which will take care of the bacteria once they enter. There are alveolar type 1 and type 2 cells which secrete a lot of opsonizing factors, surfactants and various mediators of inflammation which will prevent the uh, colonization of bacteria to occur. So disruption or overwhelming of these defense mechanism can allow the microbes to colonize resulting in pneumonia. So either disruption of these factors or overwhelming of these factors can result in a bacterial or viral pneumonia. So what are the factors that favor colonization? Disruption of the mucociliary clearance. Now that could occur secondary to airway obstruction as it occurs in COPD or bronchi bronchitis or uh, neoplasms that could occur. Ciliary dysfunction, the cilia can be problematic. Very common disease that we have the smoking. Smoking causes ciliary dyskinesia and that results in uh, pneumonias. Remember smoking is the most important risk factor which produces pneumonia. Also you have congenital syndromes like cartaginous syndrome or you have the young syndrome where you have primary ciliary or primary mucosal abnormalities which can result in ciliary dysfunction and the ciliary apparatus is not going to function. So the mucociliary clearance can get affected. Also you can have disruption of the intact epithelial barrier that could happen due to injury like pulmonary edema or intubation, infection like you have the viral uh, respiratory infections like influenza. Now that during the influenza the barrier can get affected and secondary to that you could have a bacterial pneumonia could occur. Next event is increasing inoculation events that could happen when there is, there is altered consciousness or generalized ability, dysphagia, uh, intubation, bacteremia. Now all of them will result in increased inoculation events and that can overwhelm the uh, defense mechanisms. Also decreasing immune response could be congenital or acquired, could be transplanted in HIV or there could be a certain conditions like there is evading of the host immunity like IgA proteases or encapsulation that could happen uh, in organisms like pneumococcus and influenza, H influenza, their encapsulation may not happen. So they are protected by the infection that could happen. So these are the factors which will prevent or uh, prevent the normal action of the defense mechanism and they favor the colonization of the organism. So what are the general common factors that we have which predispose to community acquired pneumonia? Extremes of age, age above 65 years of age or less than 5 years of age. An upper respiratory infection. So the common nidus of lower respiratory infection is from the upper respiratory tract. So a lingering upper respiratory tract infection can uh, result in lower respiratory tract. Comorbidities, important being diabetes, chronic kidney disease, malnutrition and heart failure. So these could also all predispose a patient to develop pneumonia. Very important factor that you have to remember, cigarette smoking. So as a rule, you do not get pneumonia in young people unless they are smokers. In elderly, it's different. But in young people, if somebody develops pneumonia, 
that means he should be a smoker. Also, alcohol can cause uh, as a predisposing factor, the patients can aspirate or their immune system could be a little lower. Corticosteroid therapy again decreases the immunity. Congenital or acquired immunodeficiencies like H, HIV, AIDS, you could have immunodeficiency secondary to drugs. Decreased or absent splenic function. Now remember spleen has the uh, function of killing these capsulated organisms. So if there is a spleen is absent either post splenectomy or due to sickle cell disease where there is an auto splenectomy happening, there is a risk of infection with encapsulated bacteria. Please remember the encapsulated bacteria, they are nothing but pneumococcus, meningococcus and H influenza out of which pneumococcus and H influenza both produce pneumonias. Also, you could have uh, respiratory conditions which can cause stagnation of secretions and that can get in infected like cystic fibrosis, uh, obstruction to the bronchus either due to a tumor or due to an inhaled foreign body or obstructing lesion like that, bronchiectasis and COPD can also produce that. Also, an important factor that also has to be considered other than smoking is the indoor air pollution. So, where firewood is used inside the houses and that can result in this problem of indoor or air pollution and the patients can develop pneumonia.